a poltergeist that kills people in their sleep. Who and why woke up the assassin from the netherworld? And what will be the price for it? Welcome to Psychics Investigate. There are only real criminal cases and mystical anomalies here that people who call themselves clairvoyants try to solve. In this episode, the psychics answered the call from a woman who's been afraid to sleep for several moths. Some kind of otherworldly spirit has been haunting Marina, a single mother, whenever she goes to bed. Once, Marina woke up in the middle of the night, feeling somebody leaning over her bed, sleepy. She thought it was her late mother. But the next moment, she almost lost fell, unconscious. A malevolent, red-eyed shadow was standing over her. The black shadow that had no definite shape. I felt numb all over, and I couldn't move or do anything. Marina barely sat up to turn the light on, but then there was nobody around. However, the moment she began falling asleep again, she felt she was floating in the midair. It grabbed me by the small of my back and tried to carry me out of the room, and I realized I couldn't resist it. It was holding my mouth shut and nose closed. I couldn't breathe. I wanted to scream, but I couldn't. I asked it, what do you want? Why are you here? But it wouldn't talk to me. I'm so tired. It's incredibly hard. The poltergeist's eerie attacks started after the tragic death of Marina's mother. The woman is sure the same black figure took her mother to the other world because in the last days of her life, she, just like Marina, developed a panic fear of going to sleep. She feared something all the time. She was on the verge. And then her mother suddenly committed suicide. 45-year-old Natalia was found hung on the seashore. I couldn't even imagine something like that could ever happen to my mother. Everyone who knew the woman was shocked by her tragic and unexpected death. Her family think that Marina's mother had no motives to commit suicide whatsoever. She was an individual who always exuded life and vitality to those around her. She was a young, beautiful, sleek woman. She loved herself. After her death, the late woman began coming to her family's dreams, trying to tell them who dragged her to the other world. She told me in my dream I was taken there, and then she said, find my murderer, Irina. Why aren't you seeking for my murderer? She asked me for money. I don't know how to explain it. Marina can't understand what money her mother meant. Neither does she understand what kind of black figure has been haunting her family. Therefore, the woman asked the psychics for help. Ukraine's most powerful psychics, Olena Kurilova and Kayal Alekperov, answered her call. Olena, yesterday I worked with Marina's photo and the gins that I use in my work showed me a young man. He was holding fire with his bare hands, but the flames didn't burn him. When I tuned into him, I felt like I was in some kind of trance. Look, the cards say that look for the murderer in dreams. What could these words possibly mean? What murderer and in whose dreams are they supposed to find them? Meanwhile, Marina and her cousin are already waiting for the psychics in their yard. Hello. 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 Thank you for coming. I feel that your mother was indeed dragged to the netherworld by the same spirit that is haunting you. However, apart from you, it poses a threat to another woman you're related to. She's got long black hair and big eyes. This is my cousin, Irina. For almost a year after her mother died, Marina has lived at her cousin's Irina, who is also divorced and raises an eight-year-old daughter by herself. Irina suggested that Marina live with her so she wouldn't stay one-on-one -on -one with her grief. The clairvoyants go upstairs to check the apartment. You have the feeling of something close by you, don't you? Yes.
Whenever the spirit approaches you, you lose strength. Yes, I sit and can't even pick up the cup to drink water. My hands tremble terribly. And everything blurs, like you're in a dream. Yes, I can't think. I don't understand anything. I can't get it at all. The air is trembling. It's right here, behind you. I'm going to faint. It was terrible. I hear a male voice. It's quiet, and it says she didn't pay. Me or Marina? I don't know. I'm not even sure it's about you or her. Then what was the spirit talking about? Who didn't pay it, and for what? I see a picture. A young couple standing in front of each other. I recognize the man. I saw him yesterday. He was holding the fire in his hands. The woman is holding somebody's photo, and it seems she's ordering the man to murder someone. And the weirdest thing is that they're standing in a cemetery. He seems to be an assassin. Do you hear somebody talking? Over here? A whisper. Yes, yes. I also hear it. I thought it was a draft from the window, but it was closed. It was a distinct whisper. Somebody was saying something in the whisper. It was terrifying. Suddenly, I felt somebody from the other world at the window. The window ledge fell. I'm shocked. It can be dangerous here. Let's go outside. The clairvoyants took Marina and Irina to the shore of the river not far from their home. The danger is connected with the strange couple I keep seeing, the young woman and the man with the fire in his hands. What do they have to do with us? Are they related to us? Let me see. She's dead. The woman's dead and she's somehow connected to your family. Right now, you're thinking of a dead woman, but it's not your mother. This is my mother. Her name was Olga. I was 13 when it happened. She went to bed and then had a hemorrhagic stroke. Did your mother die in her sleep? Yes. She was supposed to be 33 the next day. As far as I understand, your mothers were sisters, weren't they? Yes. Give me your hands. We got together at each other's homes every weekend to celebrate something or simply have dinner. That is, we didn't need a reason to gather, and there were never any misunderstandings, and everybody was always ready to help the others. I thought that the woman from Kayal's vision could possibly be Irina's mother. Could she be gathering all her family in the other world? But who was the young man? And what did the fire mean? Then I suddenly heard Irina call out to her deceased mother, saying, Take me with you. Why did you say that? This is awful. Because I wanted to be with her. I asked her to take me to her. Because your father made hell out of your life, right? Yes, yes. Irina says she was initially growing up in a happy family. Her calm and kind father loved her and her mother. But the grief of losing his beloved wife broke the man. And then I and the need to raise me became a burden for him. Instead of supporting his daughter, who lost her mom when she was only 13, and giving her the love and care she needed, her father offended her and beat her violently. Every day, I experienced moral pressure and physical abuse. It was so unbearable that I wanted to die, and I wished he simply killed me. If mom had been around, she would have never allowed this to happen. I kept silent for a long time, and I never told anybody of the beating and how hurt I was. It was like your father lost his mind because of the pain in his soul, and he even blamed you for your mother's death. Yes, he claimed that because of my bad grades at school, mom had been stressed all the time, and this is why she eventually had the stroke. This is awful. The father was even going to send his daughter to a foster home. Only Irina's aunts didn't allow this to happen. Thus, Irina went to live with Marina and her mother. At that moment, I saw a spirit behind Irina. A slender woman with dark hair cut short. It's my mother. She's holding a gray headscarf, wrapping it around her head. 
It's the scarf she asked me to give her for her birthday. We put it in her casket. She thanks you for the headscarf. She says she's warm there. Irina's mother was crying and saying, I saw my murderer before I died. I saw him in my dream. She says he was holding a burning photograph in his hands. This is why the young man from my vision was holding the fire. It was the burning photo. He's the one who's killing your family. And he's not a human being, but some kind of otherworldly entity. He dragged your mothers to the netherworld, and he's now hunting you. Who is he? Wait, Irina, your mother is saying something. She's repeating, Natalia, Natalia. My mother. I want to talk to your deceased mother, Marina. We need to see where she died. An hour later, the psychics and the cousins are at the shore where Marina's mother committed suicide. My heat's leaping. She's here. I felt so hot, as if she was embracing me. Your mother says she would have never left you willingly. Here. She'll hear you through this fire. I want you to be comfortable there. I love you so much. Your mother's spirit says... Ah! Gosh, oh dear. Shock. The flowers fell without any help. The family left them next to the tree on which the woman had been found dead. The entity that's killing the family tried to hinder the woman's spirit. Your mother says something about money. She told you this in your dreams. She asked me for money. I brought her the money the next day and buried it in the cemetery. The money is not for her, but I can't figure out for whom it could be then. There's somebody roaming here. I'm standing here, looking at you. At from the corner of my eye, I see somebody looking out from behind the branches. Some kind of gray face is staring at us. He's watching us, the young man with the burning photo. Why is he hunting your family? And then the mother spirit showed me two dead people, a man and a woman wearing wedding rings. The man is good looking and very fit, and his eyes are like your mom's. It's my mom's brother. Alexander. Seems like his heart stopped, too. It happened while he was sleeping. Yes, his wife died, too. She went to bed and never woke up. A dislodged blood clot. The women say their aunt died when she was a little over 40, and their uncle died a few years after her. And they both died in their sleep. So did your mother, Irina. I feel it's hardly a coincidence. Shock. Three people in the same family died in their sleep. However, Marina's mother died under different circumstances. Actually, this woman felt like in a dream before she died. It was like she'd been hypnotized. She didn't understand where she was going and what she was doing. It looks like some kind of deadly hypnosis. The young man with the burning photo has such an ability. Inducing hypnosis is the ability to make someone sleepy make them feel entranced. What kind of force is it? And where did it come from? And why did it choose our family? It's some kind of otherworldly entity. Such an entity doesn't like to bow in front of anybody, but it can agree to a deal for which it will always demand a payment. And the payment can even be the deaths of a person's family members. Is this man who summoned this force somehow connected to our family? Or is he a stranger? The cards tell me the entity was summoned by a woman who did it because she was desperate, because of love. The woman carried out the ritual at the graveyard. In my vision, she ordered the murder of someone in the photo from the otherworldly assassin. But she's long gone. At that moment, the spirit of the mother who died on the site began telling me about some Natalia who died. I was very surprised. We arrived there because her name was Natalia but it turned out that it was all about another woman with the same name. Who could be this other Natalia who is dead now? 
the wife of Uncle Alexander. Your mother's brother? The one who died in his sleep? Yes, yes, he did. The killing entity is connected to your aunt Natalia. Natalia, why did you die? Why is your family suffering? The cards told me that Natalia's husband, your uncle Alexander, was going to leave her. He didn't love his wife anymore. She was doing her best to keep her marriage together. She wanted to keep him. She loved him, it was obvious. She often came to see my mom, and she cried a lot. Then she began transforming. She changed her hairstyle and used different makeup. She started looking brilliant. But as I see, it didn't help her. So I thought, what if the woman cast a love spell on the man and summoned the entity that later killed her, husband, and then stayed bound to the family? To see if your aunt really cast the love spell, we need to work on her grave. Sometime later, the psychics and the cousins arrived at the municipal cemetery. Here's my mother's grave. Here is Aunt Natalia's, and here's Uncle Alexander, her husband and my mom's brother. I see the entity in the young man's body again. There's the woman carrying out the ritual in front of him. She gives him somebody's photo and says, kill. Kill who? There's a woman in the photo. If Natalia had been casting the love spell, she'd have taken her husband's photo. But the photo is of a woman, and she ordered the entity to kill her. Was Natalia probably trying to get rid of her rival? Just a moment. Alexander, did he have a mistress? Yes, he did. He was going to leave his family for another woman. She's underground, so she's dead, right? Yes. So could his wife be causing his mistress's death? No, something doesn't match. The book says that the mistress died before Natalia. Yes. The wife died first, then Alexander, and then his mistress, right? Yes. His mistress also went to bed and never woke up. And then I felt like I was struck by a lightning. It was the mistress who carried out the ritual. She burned Natalia's photo. This is why your aunt died first. The book says that the mistress was familiar with magic. Yes, people said she was a witch. I hear something like hissing. Go to bed and never wake up. This is what she was reciting. The mistress was whispering those words over Natalia's photo. That's why the entity that kills people in their sleep came. The young man with the burning photo did what he was asked and killed your aunt. But because he wasn't released afterward and didn't get the payment, he took the man the mistress loved so much, and then he took her. And later, he began hunting everybody who is related to them energetically. If we don't stop him, he's going to destroy your entire family. Olena, I feel something squeezing my heart. I can't say a word. It won't let you talk. Give me your hand. Help us, please. We can't handle this alone. We will help you. We need to summon the entity to understand how we can rid you of it. But we're going to do it outside the graveyard. I was going to summon the entity through the fire. The circle of the sand, charged with the prayers, was supposed to hold it back. I wrote the spell on a piece of cloth to summon the man. I'm scared. He's here. His face is like that of death. Yes, yes, it's like a skull. Here's the skull. There's the skull among the flames. Please tell us, how should we pay you so you'll leave us and our children alone? What do you want from us? Pay as many coins as the years I've spent here. Marina, this is why your late mother told you about the money in the dream. When did your aunt die? In 2003. Then we need 16 coins, no matter the value. Find them quick. We don't have any coins. The whole crew begins searching for coins in their pockets. 
All right, ladies, with the left hand to the heart of the fire. Leave us alone. Leave our children and us alone, please. And leave our family alone. We all want to live. Once the cousins pronounced the final words, the fire burned brighter. He accepts the price. He's gone. You're safe now. We're so grateful. Thank you so much. This is incredible. The mistress's love magic took her, her rival, and the man she loved to the netherworld. Even more, the assassin from the other world almost destroyed the entire family. Was the love really worth such a price? And was this love truly genuine in the first place? If you're impressed by the story, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Many more exciting episodes are still to come.